Beware those who have made looking innocent an art. Welcome, humble adventurers, to my realm of knowledge and mystery. Here, in my cursed library, are endless tomes and scrolls on the darkest and evilest foes in all the realms, be they from Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, the many worlds of darkness, or any realm in between. Welcome to the Dastardly Decimal System. I'm your caretaker of the corrupt, the librarian, Caster Kane. Good evening, Mr. Kane. Ah, uh, yes, my appointment has arrived, and right on time, I must say. Time is sacred, so I do my best to be punctual. I don't get many appointment reservations here, so this was a nice change of pace. Proper introductions first. I am the Wizard Jacquard, and it is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I am very honored, so how may I help you? My homeland is a turbulent one. Undead are a prominent and constant threat. Time and time again, I have found myself face to face with the machinations of a lich. So I do my best to study them. I learn about their intoxicating power, their corruptive motives, and the elegance in their magic. I have studied the likes of Asararak, Varala, and even Zastam, but I have come across a name I do not recognize. Osterneth. I am not surprised that you have not heard of her. Even compared to other liches, she is a very secretive woman. How about you take a seat while I brew us a pot of tea? I think voluptuous seductive tea will do us best. It is a mix of rubios and rose apple. This flavor stimulates the body and dulls the senses for a deliciously sensual experience. Take a seat, if you will, as we discuss the vile seductress known as Osterneth, the Bronze Lich. To most that see her, Osterneth was a seductive, aristocratic woman, landing somewhere in her 20s. Her look of demure gentility was emphasized by a rich wardrobe and a charming smile that seemed to melt the hearts and mind of most men and many women. Claiming nobility from a distant land, Osterneth uses her charisma, guile, and sexual appeal to gain favor amongst the scions of high society. Osterneth, however, was the definitions of looks can be deceiving, and beneath the demure image was a frightening truth. Her true form was a fleshless skeleton, each of her bones having been bronzed and inlaid with several soul gems. Within the empty cavity of her chest pulses the heart of Vecna, a shriveled relic preserved from the desecrated remains of Vecna's original body. The eyes of her naked skull blazed with prismatic radiance that created her powerful glamour effect. In combat, Osterneth is aggressive, domineering, and confident. She sends her allies in first before fearlessly joining in. She blasts her foes with dark, corrupted void lightning and infects them with flesh-eating necrotic magic. She dominates her foes by burning away their strength before luring them close with a hypnotic look. Once weakened, she would instantly kill a foe and trap their soul inside one of her many soul gems. There, she would store the soul until she needed to burn it away in order to heal her wounds. Like most liches, she could not be properly defeated unless her phylactery was destroyed. Yet, unlike the common lich, she would return in only a single day instead of the normal ten. To some, she is known as the Supreme Seed of Darkness. To others, she is referred to as the Heart of the Whispered One. Regardless of her title, she has cemented her place in the hierarchy of villainy as the mightiest and most loyal servant of Vecna. But where did it all start? The truth is, we do not know. Osterneth went to a great deal to obscure and hide the details of her past. 
What we do know comes from rumors, whispers, and very powerful scrying. Osternith was born in a kingdom that has long since been forgotten. Some reports say she hails from the world of Eberron, while others put her in every world from Greyhawk, Nenter Vale, and even Faerun. Whatever the truth is, the name of her kingdom has long since been forgotten. She was born to nobility and lived the life of a pampered, spoiled child. She was always a clever child and quickly learned that as a woman, and a petite one at that, she was always underestimated by the male lords. When she was of age, she was married off to the king of an allied nation in a marriage of convenience, one that had become anything but. Using her beauty and charisma, Osternith quickly mastered court politics. Her laughter was infectious and her smile charming. And with those tools, she quickly lured numerous young nobles into her fold and allegiance. Everybody loved her and loudly sung her praises. Everyone except her husband, the king. The king was a cruel and heavy-handed man. Osterneth was forced to suffer under his beatings and humiliations. What little solace she found was in the arms of the king's covetous brother. Was one sibling better than the other? No, not in the least. The brother simply wanted her because she belonged to the king, but as terrible as that was, that was still an aspect that Osterneth could exploit. Using her body and charm, she exploited the brother for comfort and tutelage. Before long, she had learned from the brother how to cast arcane magic. When possible, Osterneth would slip out of the castle and masquerade as a mediocre adventuring wizard. During these events, she was free, no longer bound by court rules or the machinations of greedy men. She lived for these fanciful outings. That is, until things turned tragic. While on an outing with her companions, her company of adventurers accidentally stumbled across a den of cultists. These were the worshippers of Vecna, a relatively new god at the time. Osterneth watched in horror as, one by one, her companions were brutally murdered. The cult spared Osterneth, but kept her prisoner. Months passed with her in captivity until one day, they inexplicably released her. Her homecoming was met with great fanfare. The favored queen had been returned to them. She had changed, however. She had become more aloof and distracted. Most took this as a symptom of her captivity, unaware of the corruption that was brewing inside of her. Tragedy struck again, mere weeks after her return. The king had taken ill and eventually passed. His brother fell to the same fate shortly after. Whisper of poisonings filled the court, but they were quickly silenced when the rumor mongers suddenly went missing as well. Osterneth was crowned queen. She was a benevolent ruler, albeit a distracted one. She became increasingly distracted by her studies of eldritch rituals, arcane relics, and magical tomes. With each passing year of her reign, she deferred more and more of the ruling tasks to her lords and ladies. As her obsession with her studies grew, so too did her negligence of the world around her. Aggressions between the kingdom of her birth and the kingdom of her rule had begun to mount. Tensions rose so great that war broke out. For three long years, a bloody war tore apart both kingdoms, until the armies of her birth kingdom stormed Osterneth's capital. They defeated her forces and laid siege to her castle. Yet, as the invading army pierced the castle walls, they found a terrifying threat waiting for them. All of Osterneth's training was not just for knowledge. She had become stronger, darker, and a hell of a lot more powerful. She was now a dangerous and wrathful mage. With a raise of her hand, she resurrected her dead countrymen 
and created them into an undead army, using them to obliterate her would-be conquerors. During her years of training and study, Austerneth dove into some dark tomes and forbidden knowledge. She even reached out into the depths of darkness and evil to make contact with Vecna himself. The Whispered One was still a new god at this time, and eager to expand his power and his reach. Vecna not only had foes in the mortal realm, like a Serac and Cass, but the gods themselves were none too pleased with his ascension. Vecna needed allies and saw great potential in Osterneth. He first guided her to the latest hideout of her once kidnappers. Vecna gleefully watched as Osterneth slew the cultist leader and instructed her to take the artifact that he once protected. This was the heart of Vecna. Then, under his tutelage, she performed a dark ritual that embedded his heart into her chest forever transforming her into a powerful lich. Now, as Vecna's most loyal subject, Osterneth travels the multiverse, weakening kingdoms and bringing them into Vecna's rule. She shows up in a new land, claiming nobility from a distant kingdom. She charms her way into high society, using subversion and corruption to gain favor with the elite. Then, she would seduce the kingdom's leader, bringing them willingly into the worship of Vecna. Osterneth is a terrifying monster, albeit a fascinating woman. So much power and deception in such an unassuming form. Sadly, this is not uncommon. But why would one so keen go through the struggle of bronzing her bones? I have no proven facts as to why, but I do have a theory. Some cultures say that bronze can be used to generate and store holy energy. Perhaps, in bronzing herself, she has found a way not only to generate more arcane and divine power, but to store it as well. Such an act would grant her far more power. Interesting. Oh, yes. Well, I must be on my way. Thank you for your time and lore. You have been a great help. Anytime, friend. You are always welcome to join me for more stories and lore about the darkest villains from the darkest realms. This has been the Dastardly Decimal System, and once again, I am your librarian, Caster Kane. Do you love the Dastardly Decimal System and want to support us? Check out our brand new Patreon. Members will get access to show notes, official artwork, our new bonus episode series called Cleaning Up After Tea Time, and of course, plenty of cat pics of Vega voice actors Vash and Zid. You'll even be able to suggest a topic for a future episode. Check it out at patreon.com slash dastardly decimal system. If you're not financially able and still want to support us, suggest the show to a D&D loving friend. It really helps us get noticed. The Dastardly Decimal System can be found on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at DD System Podcast. That's Delta Delta System Podcast. Drop us a message and say hi. Vega always loves the attention. This podcast was produced by Midnight Reading Audio, a division of Midnight Reading Publishing. The voice of Caster Kane is Larry Gent. Hi. The voice of Jacquard the Wizard is Cecil Baldwin. Follow him on X and Instagram at Cecil Baldwin III. The voice of Vega is provided by my cats, Vash and Zid. Music was Mist in the Elven Lands by Elias Weber from Pixabay, licensed under the Creative Commons. Thank you, and have a wonderful, wonderful evening.